Sailing Star of India requires setting, trimming, and dousing the sails, which are her only source of power. Stand by to set sail! Fire, man, and ready! Lay off and loose all sail! A chain of command from the skipper to the mast captains launches a series of coordinated actions, which will be carried out by the crew on deck and aloft. Uh, it's pretty amazing watching those guys go up to the top of those masts and, and stand on that little bitty rope and work with those sails to get the sails up and down. It's, uh, it must be a scary thing to do in uh, high winds and high seas and rain. First couple times up, it was very scary. And it's, it's still a little scary every time you go up, but I'm not too nervous anymore. If you look down, it's pretty scary. <laughs> the feeling of being aloft, let me put it this way. If the hair on the back of your neck doesn't stand up with that view, you don't belong here. Work aloft is safety driven. Stepping on starboard. Starboard eye. One hand for yourself and one for the ship. And always keep your safety harness clipped on. Star of India's rigging is a highly organized technological system, a machine which allows a few sailors to safely harness the immense power of the wind. Let fall is the command coordinating teamwork on the yards to let the sails fall into their gear. With the sails in their gear, the crew can return to the deck. Set your staysails! Ease the foretop of staysail down haul, haul the way the hell. Shipboard language is practical and economical, identifying sails and lines by their location or function and directing the work of the crew. Man to me, time to stay some gear! Halyards haul sails up, downhauls pull them down. Ten of the star sails run fore and aft. Some of the fore and aft sails are usually the first to be set and the last to be taken in. The push of the sails is evenly balanced about a point in the hull, the ship's center of resistance to the water. Set your spanker! Rear sails are balanced by the sails forward. Ease your inner jib down haul. Haul away the halyard. Tend your shape. Ease your outer jib down haul. Haul the halyard. At sea, the ship responds like a weather vane. Pressure on the sails aft pushes the bow up into the wind. Pressure on the sails forward pushes the bow downwind. Balancing the sails holds the ship on her course. The sails are set for the wind and the course. The rudder itself is really only a trim tab, fine-tuning the ship's heading. Now for the square sails. Set your lower topsails! Man the lower topsail gear! Ease your clothes, haul away your sheets, sheet her home. Beat up your lower top! The cluelins and buttlins are the gear which have held the sails loosely gathered to the yards. These lines are eased, allowing opposing lines, called sheets, to pull the corners down, setting the sails. The lower topsails are first. Since they are rigged alike, to know the lines on one mast with yards is to know the other. Set your upper topsails! Sheet on the upper top! How are we doing on, distance? on the floor! On the main! Walk away the hires! Next, we set the upper topsails. This time, the whole crew is needed to raise the yards. Up one side for the main, down the other on the fore, opening the sail like a window shade. Muscles are magnified by the purchase of the takels. Yards weighing over a ton of piece are heaved straight up, stretching the sail taut. One more cut. That's well, make it fast. The weight on the halyard is held. On the main, easy up. So it can be shifted to the rail. Driver's only up behind and safely secured. All fast. All fast. Bring your stopper. 
The topsails are set. Set your tagallants! Next, we set the tagallants. On the main! On the fore! Sheet on the tagallant! Like opposing muscles in the body, as one line is pulled, its counterpart must be eased. On the tagallant! Walk away the halyard! Tagallant yards are going up together. This time, the fore halyard goes aft on starboard, while the main halyard is hauled forward on port side. The logic and symmetry of the rig encourage clockwork efficiency. The yards are hauled up, stretching out the sails, adding more power to move the ship. Set your royals! On the main, on the fore, sheet on the royal! While they are smaller, the royals are up there catching the best wind, driving the ship. On the fore, set your flying jib! On the mizzen, set your gaff topsail! More fore and aft sails, adding to the drive, are always balanced fore and aft to maintain trim. Set your mainsail, set your foresail. Now for the big ones, the foresail and mainsail, called courses. Sheet at home and their tacks boarded, the leading edges are drawn tight against the wind. On the main, on the mizzen, all the way on your halyard. Ease your sheet, ease your downhaul. Throw off the downhaul, all the way on the halyard. In a working life, Star of India sailed with a crew of two dozen or less, and it took half a day to set all the sails. Today, we sail with a crew three times that size, and we can set everything in less than an hour. Harnessing 19,000 square feet of canvas to push over 1,200 tons of ship through the water requires precise trimming of the sails. The wind determines the set of the sails and our course. If the wind or the course changes, we must trim the sails to compensate. With the wind abeam, all sails can draw efficiently. If we fall off, putting the wind on our after quarter, we are on our fastest point of sail. Sailing dead downwind is not as fast because only the aftermost sails catch clear wind and they blanket the sails in front of them. Sailing upwind with a wind from ahead is our most difficult point of sail. The yards must be braced as far as they can go to one side or the other. In other words, they must be hauled around as close as possible to the wind. Brace hard to starboard! As in setting, always starboard braces! Trimming sails usually pairs hauling with easing lines port or starboard. Fore and aft sails can be hauled in much tighter than the squares. When the ship heels over, the yards must be leveled so that they are squared to the wind. The higher you go, the faster the wind and in consequence, the more it seems to come from behind. Therefore, the yards are braced progressively more square the higher they are. When sailing upwind, to keep the sails trimmed, the helmsman must adjust the course with every change in the wind's direction. The helmsman watches. If the wind backs the sail, he turns the ship until the sail refills, and he can steady on course. Lines need careful tending. Four and a half miles of running rigging must always run free without tangling or jamming. Once a length of rope is put to use, it becomes a line with its own name and is never referred to as rope again. The sailor's job is to overhaul the lines, keeping them working until the voyage is over. When it's time to take in the sails, the process used in setting them will be reversed. Douse your square soles! Rise, tacks, and sheets! On the main, rise, tacks, and sheets! Now the lines which set the sails are eased, allowing their counterparts to gather up canvas, spilling the wind, and depowering the rig. The square sails are doused in reverse order of the way they were set. First, the large courses at the very bottom, then the high royals at the top. Clue down the royal! As its halyard is eased, the royal yard is pulled down into its home. 
Then the sheets are eased, allowing the sail to be gathered up into its gear. Next, the tagalan is doused in the same fashion. As the yard is lowered, slacking lines are tended. When movable yards are lowered, their weight finally comes to rest on fixed wire rigging called lifts. With the yard in its lifts, the sheets are released and the sail is once more gathered into its gear. The upper topsail yard is safely lowered, its multiple purchase halyard fully controlled by only one crewman. Since the lower topsail is stationary, its sail needs only to be hauled up into its gear, somewhat like a theater curtain. Still balanced, the fore and aft sails are taken in. Douse your staysails! Ease the halyard all the way into downhaul. By now, you've probably learned that the staysails take their name from the stays they are on, and the downhauls work opposite to halyards, so you're already learning the ways of the ship. From the mizzen gaff topsail, Stand by to take in the spanker. To the spanker, you can tell the bottom of a sail from its head. As the sails are doused aft, up forward, the head soles are lowered, maintaining balance. The more you learn, the more you come to appreciate Star of India's intricate mechanisms and their simple beauty. At sea, in light air, sails may be loosely furled, ready to be set again. The whale off and furl all sail! However, to look proper in port, they're given a skin-tight harbor furl. At sea, this is also how you would want them to be furled, to avoid being shredded in heavy winds. Today's square rig sailors carry on traditions developed over centuries. In doing so, they're preserving not only these great ships, but the skills needed to sail them. <laughs>